The ocean's my happy place. Just I love the water and I love the feeling of it and being in it and the way that you can look at the land from the water. It's just a different perspective. I was always a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. Surfing, biking, climbing. That was a lot. I was like, I love these things so much, you know? I wanted to be tramping all summer in the hills and I can't do that now. I feel like there's that first instinct where I'm like, I need to run, I need to get out of here. There's the like need almost. It's hard to not go to those places. That's why I get frustrated, because I'm still like thinking I'm the same. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna, I'm a Kiwi. I love the outdoors and I'm an amputee. I'm a surfer first. Just love it. I love the ocean. And I'm always out with like the boys. There's quite a lot of competitive nature and like I've always been kind of in that environment. I've always loved being outdoors and exploring. She's constantly hiking or canoeing or mountain biking or ice picking. I don't know, like, you know, always doing something like that. I'm the oldest, and there's my brother, Benjamin. And then 13 years later, there was Anna. <laughs> oh. She stops us from being old, because she's <laughs> young and fun, always moving, doesn't really sit still. I was studying marine science and ecology at Otago Uni in Dunedin. And I was in my third year, and I got into Banfield, which is like a little marine science centre on Vancouver Island, and they are amazing. So I decided that I could do that to finish my degree. Before Canada, just went to Yosemite for climbing for like about seven days. I loved climbing, so it was perfect. It didn't seem too hard. The first pitch was real straightforward within our like range of where we wanted to climb, our comfortability. And I was like getting in the flow of it a little bit and I was kind of liked it, like the fact that you're a little bit like free. I went up to that bolt and then clipped it, went across to the right instead of to the left. And I just put my foot on it and then I weighted it and I was like, oh yeah, that's good. Lifted this one off and then I was not in the right place at the right time and slipped on this way. It was a long way up, so it fell really far. I can feel all this like pain and crazy feeling that you're like, I just need help, like emergency help. And I go quite calm, I think, and just like, I need help now and then just gonna wait for the helicopter. And I remember like hearing the like, you know, the and being like, yes, like they're coming. It was a horrific fall. She fell nearly 30 meters and had so many injuries. She was in a critical state and in a lot of pain. I compressed my T8, so it was putting pressure onto my spinal cord. I broke my pelvis, all the bones in my foot on the side. And then this one pretty much didn't have a talus anymore. It wasn't, it, it was gone, it was obliterated. It was left on, on the mountain. The surgeon showed me some photos of what they could do and talked about pros, cons, limitations, um, that kind of thing, and what he recommended, which was that amputation. There's like a lot of emotion around the decision, but if I like stripped all the emotion away, I was just like, is this gonna give me the life that like I would want, most want to live? And that was amputating. And I, I just kind of knew that. I had a lot of peace about it. I'd say supernatural peace about, nah, this is the right decision. When Anna had her accident, both my parents flew over straight away and they were able to be with her over there. But my brother and I weren't able to, so we had to wait. And that was a really hard, long wait. When she arrived and we were all waiting at the airport and you're so full of emotion, like you've been waiting, you know, like six weeks to see her. 
And then as soon as they open the door, she's just like, hi! <laughs> and you're just like, what? <laughs> you know, and so you couldn't then help but smile and laugh. I went straight to Christchurch, then to Burwood Spinal Unit, where I learnt to walk again. It was like a pretty tough patch. Quite hard those first few days, accepting that the injury had happened. Just like dealing with looking at yourself in the mirror. It's super hard to see part of you gone. You have to learn to accept your new body. It's like a grief that I'm still dealing with, to be honest. Oh, you made me salad. You and I, yep. Oh, yum. <laughs> this is another good thing about the oh, house. Dave. I just left Burwood last week and went to stay at my auntie and uncle's house till the end of the year. Transitioning into this new period. It looks good. And I do like the salads. I need to watch it too. The lighter I am and the stronger muscles I have, then it just makes life so much easier for my for my leg. <laughs> Uh, a weight ratio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hi, guys. Hello. Lizzie and Ruth from my physio team are coming to just go over some goals and plans. When I first fell and I was in ICU, I was just like, oh, I'm just going to go and get back to everything that I did beforehand. I was super excited that somebody believed in me. It's nice to still have those like big goals in the back of my head for, for myself anyway. So, and then we're just having to think about uh, your right lower limb strength as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the stability in the ankle and also maybe range of motion. We're just working on, like, first getting back to, like, walking without crutches and being able to do normal activities well before getting back out to all the ones that I really love. That, and I'm not re quite ready to wear one yet. That probably brings us quite nicely on to is kind of that balancing between all the really fun activity. So all that, yeah. yeah. As well as functioning at home after leaving Burwood Hospital, where everybody understands yeah. disability, and that everything's flat, and now it's and like... And wheelchairs are normalised. I think that's yeah. where, yeah, like I'm just using my leg all the time now, because it's like, mm -hmm. everyone's walking. I'm going to walk. I yes. Mean. Yeah. And I know one of your goals is to move into a rental with your friends in Christchurch. Yeah. Which then means you have to be independent with all of these things yes. as well, isn't it? We got the driving assessment booked. For Anna re-establishing her independence. You know, going from being in Dunedin, uni student, enjoying life with her friends, to now being here, trying to maintain her sense of identity. She's so motivated. Um, and yeah, I have every faith in her that she will achieve all the goals that, in the long term and in the short term as well. Yeah. Yeah. The atrophies. This is shrinking so fast. Pretty much it's already lost size. It used to be about the same size as this leg. Um, and you can see it's way smaller. When I slipped on this side, possibly changed from grippy granite to quartz rock, and it just started to slide this, this leg. So it was that sliding motion all the way down. It was like a crayon, human crayon. This foot was also broken. It's a little bit swollen um, here. Per, per normal, but this is all so broken here. And then right through the middle there of all those three. So this foot had a hard life as well. Saving this one means, you know, like, wow, they did save this foot even with that damage. We're at Foot in Motion, about to go see Nick Haley, my podiatrist, who's helping me get this foot stronger. How are you yeah. finding the exercises for that, um, for that foot? Oh, yeah, well, I think I've got a bit of, especially swimming, it's yes. out. Do you yeah, to... yeah, definitely. Yeah. Watching you walk across the room the other day was outstanding. Yeah, I haven't used the moon boot at all either. Cool, so, cool. So, yeah, it's just... So just give me a little bit of that movement. That's heaps better than we saw last week, eh? Hey? Yeah. I've been pressing the bare foot into yep. different kind of surfaces because it... Yeah, it's that sensitivity, eh? Because yeah, you it's have real sensitive. The hypersensitivity, yeah. because of the loss of the limb here, this guy gets really, really sensitive. Oh, I thought it was spinal. Well, it's, it's spinal oh, as well, okay. but it's just, you're like, your body's going, what's going on, what's going on? Yeah. And just understanding that movement. So all of that stuff and being able to watch it helps your brain and your body understand how that feels. Yeah. 
And I'm getting a review for that plate okay. to take it out. So I got an email from the guy at ACC. I told him our plan was to get you back up the hill. Yeah. Get you back climbing. So we've got to try and work on getting you really strong with your feet. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I know you're tough and you're pushing through, but we're just going <laughs> to keep on going. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I've done kayaking before with friends, whitewater kayaking in central Otago. And then I've also done sea kayaking in Melford. You're falling out of your kayak. Yeah. Right, you're floating, you're floating around in the water. Yeah. We're out with my sister Jess and I've kind of dragged her along, I suppose, as most things. And then Ian's awesome, so really excited for him to yeah. teach us some stuff. So you're floating in the water, just reach out, hook that leg in, and you yeah. pull yourself up and roll into the kayak. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Hopefully I'm going to be able to do that. I'd love to try do a roll, go swimming, but we'll see how it goes. Possibly getting back in without having this leg on could be interesting. I'm going to come right up next to it. You're going to hook your right leg in. Yeah. You're going to reach over with your right arm, grab that deep line and stay flat as you can. And roll. And as you just keep rolling, that's it. It's easy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Nice of the hills. Going out to play. Right. <laughs> it's hard to see your little baby sister in pain like this. But I think one thing that's made it easier is that she's always like laughing and she's always happy. She's always our beam of sunshine in our family. Hi. Wait for me, yeah. It's exciting and it's really good to see her um, like getting back um, into the outdoors, which is what she really loves. She's just so keen and determined to get out. So I'm glad that kayaking is a good sport for her injuries at the moment. Yeah, let's do the rescue, eh? Yeah. All right, go for it. OK. Are you all right, Anna? I'm coming to help. We're both coming to help. Come on, back. Hook that leg in. All right, you reach over with your right arm. Go, Anna. Yeah, roll. Roll, 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 roll. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Woo-hoo! <laughs> that was awesome. Quick <laughs> <laughs> sprint to warm up. It was quite empowering to be on the kayak. Once you're in the boat, it felt like I just didn't have a disability at all. So that's why I've really enjoyed it. I like falling over. <laughs> the next big adventure goal would be doing some more big climbs again um, and getting into a little bit of mountaineering, possibly doing aspiring. After the accident, I contacted the Limb Centre's peer support people and then got connected with Steve. So awesome, especially in those early days of just giving you a bit of hope about what was possible. Hi, Steve came to visit me when I was still in the chair and I don't think I even had my first leg. So that was awesome, because I was like, wow, he's just rocking around. His walk looks, like, real good, like, better than most people. This one I had made for when I was training for the London 2012. Oh, that's a road biking. Yeah, road bike leg, so yeah, road yeah. and track. So I had and it's carbon, carbon and aerodynamic. Yeah, that's actually yeah. a seat post off a, off a, a track bike. This is my scuba diving leg. Again, oh, it's, got wow. the, it's got the suction socket. And then finally, that's my ski leg. So it so cool. <laughs> just relies on the ski boot. Just um, allow you to, to flex and bend in your knee. Yeah. yeah so I've sort of developed the collection. Yeah, collection over 26 years of, of being an amputee. Problem is, I want all of them now. I know. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs>
Kayaking is a perfect way to start, a great activity yeah. to start with as an amputee. And even rock climbing, where you're just climbing three point rock climbing, is, yeah. is fine. You just you know have to lower your expectation on grades a wee bit. But I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's oh. ideal to, to keep on doing those things because you know it, it allows you to uh, you know live a fairly normal life. You yeah, just, I'd be you, pretty you, keen to start climbing with this off. You know, yes, just see yeah, how it goes. Yeah, cool. You've got a, a whole world of just unlimited possibilities and opportunities ahead of you. You can choose to do whatever you want to do, and yeah. it's definitely led me to a whole series of experiences which I never would have had, you know, with yeah. a, as a two-legger. And it's been phenomenal, the you know, the, the journey that it's put me on. So, you've got an amazing journey ahead of you. Just need to get climbing or surfing or absolutely. mountain biking in the Olympics. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Paralympic. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I'm in a new flat in Christchurch now at the beach, which is awesome. There's actually seven of us that live here, but we get a few blow-ins, we call them, who just come and stay, because they need a place to crash. Yeah, and it's like absolutely fine to drive. I was like real nervous. It's been it's eight like, months since my accident. Walking's really good. I feel, if I wear pants, no one has any idea I've got prosthetic, which is pretty funny. Next week I have surgery on my right foot to take out a plate, which I'm pretty excited about because it means that there'll be no metal now in that foot and it's healed pretty well. I feel pretty proud of how far my body's come. All my scars look pretty good. They're obviously there forever. They're part of me now, like everything else. <laughs> But yeah, pretty proud of how far I've come. I'm feeling pretty strong. I'm not all rainbows. There's definitely some really dark, sad moments where I'm like crying in my car and you know, it is hard. You just kind of want your leg back because it's, it's easy, it's normal, it's freeing. It's kind of like a loss of your own self almost in a way because it's your, your body, it's like, made for you, it's who you are, and you don't have part of that anymore. Recently, it's been pretty good in that whole, like, acceptance of self and, and who I am now, and it also doesn't necessarily define me, no matter how many times people ask, what happened to your leg? <laughs> Still not like Anna, you know, it's just part of Anna. My body's feeling so much stronger. It's so nice to be able to, like, trust it. I just did Abel Taswin in the sea kayak and, like, love that. And I did my dive in Kaikoura, which was awesome. Like, I didn't feel held back at all. It's been just so nice to go back into the great outdoors in New Zealand, be a part of that environment again where I find the most connection. Even climbing seems pretty possible now. You just have to look after yourself more. You want to plan for things because you've got to bring your liners and make sure your socket's not going to get wet or like, can't just jump in the water for a swim. Oh, I think my mum always told me I needed to be more patient. And I think I've gotten more patient, but yeah. Driving again's been great because I have my independence back and I can just, if I want to visit my sister or my fam or friends, I can just go. Definitely different driving an automatic. I'm used to my old station wagon, but it's, I mean, it's pretty nice. It's a lot easier. It means I can also like relax my leg or I can take it off. So it's really good for it. I'm way more aware of the potential for danger or the outcome because I've been there. A lot less naive. A good example is I went with my physio on a e-bike mountain bike, which was awesome uphill. And then we kind of got to the downhill and I was just terrified. I was honestly scared about my foot falling off. 
I used to ride a lot, you know, and I'm struggling on this little easy track. I'm just going to switch the feet out. It's oh, cool. yeah. So this is for walking. Yeah, definitely have less trust in the leg and a lack of ability <laughs> to catch the club. <laughs> and I know that it's only time. It's just learning, and I love learning, so that's OK. <laughs> right. OK, you happy? Yeah. Well, I'll just undo this. Finally climbing, woo! Cool. Rock on, woman. So nervous with the everything. How's that left foot? Is it all good? When you're climbing with friends and you're in that like flow zone, you just forget about everything, you know? It's just you and, and the wall and your mates and you're just away from everything. Um, ready to lower. I'm so thankful for everyone's support. It brought me to tears, like, seeing all the fundraisers for my medical bills and to not have that weight on my shoulder is amazing. In Dunedin, it was unreal. They raised so much money for me, and it was the whole Dunedin community. So now if I go out in Dunedin, everyone's like, oh, you know, like, they're just so, so stoked to see me. Like, it's pretty beautiful. The fact that I could come out of that so strong is, yeah, a testament to all those people and my family. They've been awesome. <laughs>